everyone. Happy Wine Wednesday. The beautiful Amy. Gorgeous Tracy. We are so thrilled to have you join us. Don't forget, like every Wine Wednesday, you stop the video, you go get whatever it is that you enjoy to wine down with, and then you come back and join us. We will be indulging in a beautiful bottle of red wine that has a little Thanksgiving flair to it. I picked this up at World Market. If I can find a link to it, I will put it down in the drop down box and on the blog post. We will let you know what we think of this. So I'm gonna get this open, you go get your drink, and we'll see you in a minute. Cheers to Wine Wednesday. Yay! It's been, why does this feel like it's been forever? I know. It has only been a month. It's, it's been, a, been month. a month. Yeah. It's been a month. And we are scheduled for one in December. I really didn't know, but right now we are scheduled and we are also doing our annual dinner, the four of us. Before, before. So we'll have, well, I'm sure we'll have much to discuss. Yes, <laughs> yes. We will, when it comes to the December Wine Wednesday, we will have just went out the weekend prior, so we will be happy to share on it. Last year was a little interesting. So. Oh, it was very interesting. <laughs> Maybe too much wine. <laughs> a little bit of wine, a little bit of cocktail, a little bra, I oh, remember. Yes, 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 there was a bra incident. <laughs> fun, so fun. It so was. Fun. Well, today's topic I think many of you are going to enjoy and it probably will hit home for many people. We're gonna talk about holiday stress, but mainly family drama and dysfunction. I feel like family drama is on the rise during the holidays. It's a very stressful time. Many people actually don't even look forward to the holiday season because there is so much family drama. Um, the anticipation of going to holiday parties and knowing that certain family members are going to be there that you just really don't enjoy being around. They get under your skin a little bit. Um, we're going to talk a lot about that today and hopefully we can help you so that your holiday season can be a little bit more stress free. Well, where should we begin? I, I have thoughts, and did you come arm and, armed and loaded with some things? And I'm sure we will be piggybacking off yes. of one another. Um, well, we were we were going to talk about the holidays, and, and I, I, I gave it a lot of thought. And there, before we get into the family drama, holiday stress in general is obviously an issue for so many people. And so, if you can address just the the everyday holiday mm -hmm. stress and not you know to learn to let some things go and to make peace with the fact that not everything has to be perfect and and um, a hallmark movie mm. because when we put those kinds of stressors on ourselves it's only going to intensify those relationships that tend to be somewhat difficult mm -hmm. one of the things that I want to say is that I think it's really important that you have to recognize you have to accept people the way they are it does not mean you have to like it and I wouldn't necessarily mean that you have to tolerate it but we can talk a little bit more about what tolerating is but you are not going to change anyone Adults do as they'd like to do. Adults say the things they would like to say. They act in ways that they would like to act. And there is nothing that another person can do. We can't fix people. And I really believe what happens is we want people to act in a way that we would like them to act. And then we're disappointed, we're irritated, we're ruffled, we're stressed about it but it's something you have no control over. So you are stressing about something that is out of your control. The only thing that you can control is yourself. You can control how you handle it. You can control how much you let it fester, but you can never control other people. And once you accept this, although it could be hard, I think it is amazing the light bulb that goes off because it's very freeing. What happens is 
you almost become a prisoner to another person. You almost become enslaved by their behavior, but you want to free yourself from that. A lot of the stress we have is self-inflicted, believe it or not. I agree, um, very much so. And, you know, just kind of going back to what you said as far as, you know, we. First of all, the holidays are really not the time. <laughs> if something has been, you know, stewing, you're not going to change them by the holidays, that's mm -hmm. for sure. And so for the most part, I think you do have to tolerate or decide to, to not engage. Mm -hmm. And obviously there are some people who are extremely toxic. And, um, and again, perhaps, you know, if something does come up at the holidays, it could be something you determine you're going to address later, but, Everyone, like I said, everyone's emotions are very intensified and you're not going to resolve it mm -mm. At, the, at Thanksgiving dinner, I assure you. So controlling In, your reaction, mm -hmm. you know, managing your own emotions and determining, you know, I don't have to engage. Right. Because guess what? Some of those toxic people are just dying for you to get set off. Don't give them, don't yeah. give them that power. Don't, don't give them, give them the, the satisfaction. satisfaction. Exactly, exactly. Because what ends up happening is often you're just as bad. I, it amazes me when I do sessions with clients and they will reach out to me because they are trying to handle a situation with another person. And they will say, this person is so much drama, this, this, this. But I often will say, are you listening to yourself? You are the drama as well. You, you're putting it all on them, but you're dramatizing the situation, which is drama. So you have to really look at yourself. And I'm not saying that you need to tolerate a conversation that always ends up going south. It's up to you whether you are engaged in that conversation or not. At our holiday parties, there's many people to have conversations with. I also want to talk about boundaries because I feel that you can't set up boundaries for other people, but you can for yourself. And if there is a particular person that you just know you have anxiety before you even get to the party, which I think is an issue as well, because now you're looking, you're looking for everything they do to pick apart, but you don't have to engage in conversation with that person. If your sister-in-law just gets under your skin and you can't you you can't enjoy yourself when you're around her well you're going to have to take responsibility for not being able to enjoy yourself why would you allow yourself to not enjoy because of someone else you can still choose to enjoy yourself but you can set up those boundaries where you're not spending too much time with her you're not engaging in conversation with her sometimes we can engage in conversation if it's a group but we can't one on one you have to determine for yourself what works, and if nothing works, then it's okay to engage in conversation with other people at the family party. I think one thing too, on the one you, on the one hand, you don't want to go into it as you stated, expecting drama. You can, to a degree, um, recognize the possibility <laughs> that someone will try and bait you, mm -hmm. and so to to know going into it. I'm not going to take the bait. I will perhaps make a, you know, a, um, a comical reply, but not passive aggressive. Mm -hmm. um, and this is how I'm going to handle it, that if a difficult situation does arise. So you're, you're not expecting it, but you're prepared in the event that it does happen. Right. And I have had people also say, well, what do you do about this? What do you do about that? Well, what do you do? Just are you a doormat and you take it? Well, no, again, only you are only taking it if you allow yourself. Again, like Amy stated, some people are just toxic. Well, whether you do something right or you do something wrong, they're probably gonna find fault with it, right? You already know that, history repeats itself. Go into it just expecting they're gonna pick you apart, they're gonna find your flaws, they're gonna talk about your kids being so misbehaved. A lot of this is bait to try to see if they can get under your skin because again, toxic people work that way. But you can control things. You will blame your actions on that person 
but you can't do that. You still are responsible for how you respond and how you react. It doesn't mean that underneath of it all, you're not ruffled by it. You're not annoyed by it. You're not frustrated, but you can take the higher road and you can be the bigger person and you can just avoid the conversation with the person. It's never worth it to fight back, to come back at them if they are like that, because again, sometimes that is just what they're trying to achieve out of the whole situation in the first place. You know what will drive them crazy? I always try to Kill them with kindness. Kill them with kindness. <laughs> them with kindness. exactly well, what we, I was going we know. To say. We yeah. know because even with what we do, and although Amy and I are just outpoured with love and support and encouragement from all of you, there there are once in a while something that leaks in that really just is just not polite. It's just really uncalled for. But we choose in a sense, to kill them with kindness. And sometimes the person will actually come back with a nice comment back and say, I hope you didn't think I meant this. So it's amazing if you just handle yourself with good decorum and be poised. It's amazing sometimes what can come out of it. How you respond and again, by not engaging, by not taking that bait, by responding kindly, um, again, you, you're, you're taking the high road. You are um, maybe setting an example or a precedent as to how we can engage in this relationship that may or may not really work for us, but in, under certain circumstances, we have to make it work. And if you, if you do decide that you want to address something at a later date, and we can talk conflict resolution, resolution skills as well later, but um, it's not, it's just not the time and place no. at, at, at the Thanksgiving table, at the at Christmas table. It's and, just not the time. And other people, you know, they're hurt by it as well. It's, if, if it's just you and let's say your sister and everybody else seems to get along, nobody really wants to hear it. And, and don't ever talk about the person that gets under your skin to other people. That's not fair. Again, you are lowering your class. You are now playing the drama. Just just silence yourself. Be humble and just silence yourself. And Amy talks about maybe at a later date, you know, conflict resolution, but I think it also goes back to some people you're never going to resolve conflict with. Right. And that's another thing that you have to ask yourself. Is it even worth it to attempt? There are many people in our lives that it is worth it. And a lot of great and wonderful things can come out of it. But unfortunately, not everyone is that way. And that's where we have to you know, set boundaries that are healthy for your own mental state. If, if the relationship is, is not healthy for you, then yes, you can set boundaries. And unfortunately, there will be situations under which you do feel um, obligated to be around them. And that's when you have to take the high road and just not engage or respond in kindness. Um, we're not saying it's easy, mm -hmm. but no. it's worth it to swallow it your ego. Here's the other thing I believe. If you are truly self-assured in who you are, you're not going to really be as ruffled by no. some of these people's it, comments because you understand what they're based in and it's based in them. They it, It's based in these other people's um, own insecurities and right. sadness and, and dissatisfaction. Mm -hmm. And so you recognize that, well, you know what, that person think doesn't think very highly of me, but I know that I'm a person of value and they just don't see that and right. that's okay. Yeah. Not everybody has to see your worth. It's just important that you do. Exactly. And uh, I've often said, hurt people hurt people. People that are miserable, they want company. They don't want to be miserable by themselves. Misery loves company and hurt people often set out to hurt other people. And you have to decide, are you that person? I mean, maybe that's what you need to ask yourself. But see your worth, see your value, and it is amazing how much you will be able to roll off your shoulders if you see your own worth and value. A big thing I want to talk about, probably not something that many people think about, but boy, do I think it's imperative. Limit the alcohol. Limit when you are at a family gathering during the holidays. I'm sure light bulbs are going off right now. We've all observed this where one, two, maybe more have had a few too many and next thing you know, things are being said, emotions are stirring high, 
tears are starting to flow, and often things are said and stones are thrown that unfortunately aren't going to be taken back very easily. Um, cut people slack if they have been drinking, but you yourself need to set your own boundaries for yourself. You can't do it for anybody else, but you can do it for yourself. Limit the alcohol. I can't stress that enough. I don't think anyone has ever said, gosh, I wish I would have drank more. <laughs> <laughs> now, I have heard people say, I have oh. to drink to be around them. But <laughs> you really? have to drink to be around them. <laughs> <laughs> but really, That's you great. never regret limiting yourself. No. I'm not no. saying, well, our, our family functions are dry. Okay. But um, limit you know, moderation is right. the key. Yeah, really and, and you have, and, and stop before those decision making, um, stop before you can't make the right decision right. to well, stop. Yeah, sure. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. If That's you, a real boundary. <laughs> you hopefully would know, okay, you know what? <laughs> Two drinks are good, but after that I start eating more. Or after that I start, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. saying a little more than I should. Right. And don't hesitate to reach out to your spouse maybe prior going to a family event. You know, I would rather have my spouse give me a nudge and kind of give me that look like I'm either drinking too much or I'm, in, I'm starting to sway into that drama. For instance, we'll go back to the sister-in-law. Just because most of my clients that complain, it's either a mother-in-law or a sister-in-law. I don't know why that is. I love my mother-in-law and I love my sister-in-law, so I, I don't know. I hear it too. I but hear it yeah. too. Yeah, you know, we have to understand that all families are different and we need to be open to that. And I, I believe that's probably why it's worked out for me is I recognize that my family was different than maybe my husband's family. So be open to that. But let's just say you and your sister-in-law just don't get along or she just gets under your skin. And I would, I would have that conversation with your husband Prior to going to the party, hey, if you see me starting to get irritated, do something to distract me from that or give me a certain look or a nudge to be that reminder because we have all great intentions. We have wonderful intentions. I'm going to do really great this year. I'm not going to be partaking in any of this. And then you get there and then you hear them, the, the sister-in-law comment on your three-year-old being so <laughs> common on your disruptive, be, crazy, being a monster. Off and the it, walls. Yeah, and of course, and that's a great one to get at you when it comes to our kids. Yeah. Right. So, and then all of a sudden, all those great intentions you had go to pot. So, have if you need to have somebody to just kind of help you to reroute you a little bit don't hesitate to ask. It doesn't make you look weak. It makes you look strong that you reached out. I think, yes, our, our partners can be a wonderful resource in that mm -hmm. way. Although you may say, do it in a loving way. Yeah, yeah. Remind, you know, and maybe you focus on the kids because I'm sorry, who doesn't get cheered up by watching, you know, the joy of the children around the holidays. Um, or play the game. How kind can I be to her right now? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna How win this much game. can I kill her? I'm with gonna kindness. win this game, and she, you know she's going down. I'm gonna be way nicer to her. I love it. That that's a great. That's it's a great a fun game. Yeah, that's a great one. Um, speaking of games, be careful what games you play. Be careful what conversations you have. Anything that can trigger a negative response out of a family member don't bring it up. Just don't bring up anything that, because again, now you're throwing bait out there and you don't get to say somebody else is right. the drama if you're throwing the bait out there trying to instigate. Keep it neutral, keep it kind, keep it loving. Um, politics may not be the, no. you know, the best thing, no. even with families to bring up. So again, just decide ahead of time, I'm going to be the sun, the ray of sunshine. I'm going to be the person that makes everyone feel good about being around me. Leave people better, better than, than you found, found them. them. Yeah. I mean, there's no better way to put it. Think about every person that you come across during the whole holiday season. How can I leave that person better than I found them? Uh, it's always a great mission to have. It's always great to have that in the back of your mind for sure. Um, okay, we have that. Um, let it go. That we kind of that's 
You know what? You so Tracy in her notes here. Um, I always one, have an outline. <laughs> I try. One, one phrase that really caught my eye is "be grateful." Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you know, yes, you may have to deal with some toxicity, but this is family, and we never know that we'll be with these same people the next year. This may be the last Thanksgiving you have with this particular family member. Let's make it a good memory. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. You know, Often we, it's not even worth it. It's yeah. really just not, yeah. When you, when you look at the grand scheme of things, is this really worth bringing ugliness into what should be a very loving gathering? Mm -hmm. Right. And we often forget the reason behind our gatherings. I mean, Thanksgiving, let's be thankful. It's a time to give thanks. Um, I think that if you are a positive person for the most part, you can actually find something positive about every single person. And right now somebody is going, oh no, and they're thinking, you don't know this person. Well, right there, right there would tell me that you have some work to do on yourself. If, if you are that person watching that just said that in your head, I'm just going to say you have some work to do on yourself if that's what came to your head. I think most, you know, if you look, you will. You will find, and, and perhaps even if you can't find the positive, which I believe is in most, it's there in most people, you can at least try to gain some understanding of their pain, which is typically behind their behavior. Mm -hmm. And if you can have just one ounce of compassion for the pain that has caused them um, to act in the way that they do, that's reason enough to, again, take the high road and extend kindness because they may not get a lot of kindness in their lives and maybe mm -hmm. that's why they're hurting so much. Yeah, some people are just bitter. You know, they're bitter about something and if you sense that about somebody, maybe you should pause and ask yourself, I wonder what they're bitter about. And you may actually find your answer. And it may end up bringing out some compassion in you. Every situation is different. We've all been through different things. And that's UPS. <laughs> I'm thankful for UPS. <laughs> I'm thankful for UPS. <laughs> I'm going to go get that, and I will be right back. Amy, any final thoughts on this topic as I we wrap think, things up? I think as we were just stating, remember the reason, the purpose. It's bigger than your conflict. And you can be that bigger person. You can extend that love, that kindness. Be the reason, you know, that, that the conflict gets stopped and that you don't engage and, and just, you know, for one day, peace. Mm -hmm. Just think peace. peace. Yeah. You're going to go home. On that ride home, you're going to be so thankful. You have two ways to get in that car for your ride home. It's either happy with how you handled yourself or not happy with how you handled yourself in disappointment. And remember that. One last thing I do want to share is that when I do sessions with clients, and I don't know if this is something that gets brought up in your counseling, but when I am working with a client that has someone or several people in their life that they have animosity and drama and dysfunction with or estrangement, I will ask them this question. Did any of your parents have a relationship like this with somebody? Was there estrangement? Where, was there drama? Was there people not speaking? And I would say about 100% of the time, 
The answer is yes. The apple does not fall far from the tree. If you observed this type of behavior growing up, often you will have it in your adult life and somebody has to break this cycle. I encourage you to be that person that breaks this cycle for your own children because if you don't, it's going to get passed on from generation to generation. Really give that some thought. Is this something that you have found in your counseling? Is it something that gets brought I would up? Say, um, well, I mean, we always talk about family of origin. Um, oh gosh, that's a tough one because I've seen, I've seen, both. It, yes, mm -hmm. I've seen both sides. Regardless, though, you don't have to perpetuate it. You can be the example of, you know, someone that just extends kindness and doesn't engage in, mm -hmm. in the drama, in the conflict. And, and, and again, it's, you know, sometimes you can just think it's one day. Right. Yeah. I can do it for one day. You can, anybody can do anything for one day. And you can do it for longer if you choose to because self-control is all in your hands. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for joining us. We enjoy all of the conversations that we have with you. Don't forget to leave in the comments section thoughts on today's video. Share with us how you are handling things with your family. Are you going to make changes if you do have drama or dysfunction in your family? We also want to wish you a wonderful Thanksgiving. Be grateful. Be thankful. Know that you are loved, and we are so appreciative of all of you. We're thank I'm thankful for you, I'm my friend. I'm thankful for you, thankful yes. thankful for all of your wonderful yes. supportive followers. Yes. Yes. And, um, yeah, focus on gratitude. Gratitude is everything. It is. All right. We will see you next month for Wine Wednesday. Cheers. Cheers.